they saw, you know, little future. He's nine months at the time or whatever, and he crawls in my lap, and it was like, you know, this is going to be my responsibility. God, I remember, I remember leaving that night, and God saying, "This is, this God's, God said, saying to me, raising this child, is this going to be your responsibility?" Mm-hmm. And realizing, that, I pray that God, are you sure this is what you want me to do? I say, son, this is for you. The first night. Yeah, the first night. Mm-hmm. It's going to be your responsibility. And was it's that been, scary? Was that scary? Oh yeah, I mean, I think scary just in the sense of not scary, but it was more so an opportunity. Like, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. This is, you know, stepping in to raise, you know, a child with C and this and that. And, I, and realizing that, okay, God, like, I know she's the one for me, but also, too, I'm, I'm going to take this responsibility as well. Like, okay. Like, and I was ready for that. I was ready for that. I was ready to, you know, I love children, as you know. I love kids and everything else. But it was like, man, I walked in the room and, and to, 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 to help raise a child and everything else, understanding that, okay, God, you're gonna you're gonna give me this opportunity. What a gift! Even Jesus himself, like Joseph was, Joseph was a, was a stepdad. I was like, okay, he, it wasn't biologically his. So I'm like, okay, God, you're gonna you're gonna have me this, give me this opportunity to love the way that you were loved, and to 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 help raise a child and everything else. Understanding that, okay, God, you're gonna you're gonna give me this opportunity. What a gift! Even Jesus himself, like. Joseph was Joseph was a, was a stepdad. I was like, okay, he, it wasn't biologically his. So I'm like, okay, God, you're gonna you're gonna have me this, give me this opportunity to love the way that you were loved, and to. All right, so you heard yourself there. What uh, the quarterback Russell Wilson said, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole select. So like I said, you heard what Russell Wilson said out of his mouth. He basically he's saying that the Lord's uh Joseph wasn't the biological father of the Lord, which is incorrect according to the scriptures when you have understanding. And I'm gonna prove that Joseph was the biological father of our Lord, right? The Lord wasn't born of a, I believe the term is immaculate conception, if that's the term, All right? So we're going to go into, which matter of fact, uh, let's go into that definition. What does immaculate, let me see if I can spell that. There we go. Right, so the Immaculate Conception, the doctrine that God preserved the Virgin Mary from the taint of original sin from the moment she was conceived, it was defined as dogma of the Roman Catholic Church in 1854. Right, so basically Mary was a virgin according to what is taught in the church is that Mary was a, a virgin, right, and that pretty much the Lord just threw a baby or put a baby in her stomach and there you go, which is incorrect according to the proper understanding of the scriptures, right? So that's what the immaculate conception or the virgin birth is. So let's start here at verse 18, but mind you, right? People automatically go and just read and say, oh yeah, you know, the Lord was born of a ho of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, you know, the Virgin Mary, which that goes back to Samaramis, Tammuz, you know, and all that type of stuff, right? But basically, the Lord just took a virgin, which people, when they think of virgin, which going to go into that as well. People think of a virgin according to this standard, which would be pretty much a woman that never had sex with a man, which according to the script, which, uh, which is one of the definitions of a virgin, but the word virgin has different definitions, right? Now, mind you, I want you to understand that going back from the first verse to the 17th verse, it gives you the genealogy of the Messiah going all the way back to Abraham, all the way to where we are at now in the scriptures with Joseph. So it gives you his lineage where he goes back to. The Lord goes back to, uh, to Abraham. Right. Beginning with Abraham. So Abraham would pretty much be a forefather of the Lord. But here it is. People believe that what 
the Lord was born of, according to them, an immaculate conception where the Lord just threw, put a baby in what they call the Virgin Mary or Mary's uh, stomach, and there you go. And according to Russell Wilson, he believes that same thing where, and look, I'll say this. Look, Russell Wilson, if you want to be a stepfather, that's on you. You be a stepfather, but don't bring your confusion and your nonsense into the scriptures or the understanding of the scriptures. Don't do that. If you, any of you guys, if you guys want to be stepfathers, be stepfathers. Take care of another man's kid. But don't sit there and say that, oh, the father of our Lord, which I'm talking about his biological father, his earthly father, was a stepdad. No, that was not, that's not scriptural. That's not in the scriptures. So enough, you know, babbling. Let's get into it. Now, <clears throat> this is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now it says, the birth of Yahweh Shai was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. So let's go into that definition of espoused. Right? And espoused is, as you can see then when you go into the definition, past tense. E-D. E-D is past tense, right? So what does espouse mean, right? Now, going to the second definition, it says archaic, which is marry. Right. So really, when you read that with understanding, pretty much right. A spouse or espoused means marry or married. Right. So now reading with understanding what espoused means. Now, the birth of Yahweh Shai was on this wise when as his mother Mary was married. Right. Because a spouse means to be married to, uh, means to marry and ED means past tense. Right. So when his mother Mary was when his mother Mary was married to Joseph, past tense, meaning that she was already married to Joseph, right? Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, right? So they were already married. They were already together. Now you have to understand this is what messes people up because people think of marriage in modern terms, in modern times. You have to understand that during the time that these people were walking the earth, customs and things like that marriage was much different than how it is today people think of like a virgin like a per a woman that a woman that never touched had never been penetrated by man which is one of the definitions for virgin but it also has another definition as well another meaning as well and marriage people think of marriage in today's standards of walking down the aisle the man is waiting there at the altar and things like that with the the pastor, whoever, and then you're given into marriage and things like that. No, they had a whole different system back then, right? That's why when you read, when we read the definition, it says what? The second definition is archaic, right? Pretty much the ancient ways of doing things. What the, What is the ancient meaning of a spouse? Meaning to marry. Now you have to go into pretty much how did people get married back then or what was the way people got married back then, right? What was deemed marriage back in the times when these people were walking the earth? Now I have here in the Zondervan, I'm sorry, in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, uh, the definition of marriage according to ancient biblical times, ancient biblical customs. Now it has here the definition for marriage, and if you have the book, it's on page 345. It says marriage is an intimate, intimate, personal union to which a man and woman consent consummated and continual con, I'm sorry continuously nourishment by sexual intercourse so to make it very simple for you sex is marriage when you have sex with a woman that is marriage and that can be proven in the scriptures <laughs> right as the scriptures say through thy precepts I get understanding not just saying stuff <laughs> Uh, because you hear it out of other people's mouth, right? So again, after reading the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, according to biblical standards, according to biblical times, sex is marriage, right? Sexual intercourse is marriage. This is Genesis chapter 24 and verse 62, going all the way back to the first book of the Bible. And it says what? Isaac marries Rebecca. Now let's see what... what uh, when we read this, what is marriage in biblical times? And Isaac came from the way of the well of Lehi, Lehi Roth. I'm sorry, Lehi Roy. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. I believe I'm not, but let's continue. For he dwelt in the south country 
And, I, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. <laughs> For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother, I'm sorry, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife. How did they become husband and wife? What do you think he brought her into a tent to do? To bump and grind. That's pretty much what they did in the tent. That's how they became husband and wife. And he loved her and Isaac was com comforted after his mother's death. So that's pretty much how in the ancient times, not according to the standard or ways of modern times, but in the ancient times, that's, and it still consists today, regardless of people want to believe it or not, right? But that's how things were done in the ancient times, in biblical times, that sex is marriage. So yes, if you have sex with women, that is pretty much your wife. Or let me put it this way, if you're the first guy to pretty much go in onto a woman, she has now been your wife. Or she is now, sorry, your wife. So now, oh my bad. So now going back to Matthew, excuse me, with that understanding of the definition of pretty much what married marriage is, right? Now on this, no, I'm sorry. Now the birth of Yahushua was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused, meaning married, already married. And again, what is marriage? sex so they were already i'm gonna just say it straight up, they was already bumping and grinding but this is what gets people confused this is where the trip up was this i'm sorry this is where the trip up is after the comma it says before they came together see that before they came together is what messes people up and makes people think oh so that's before you know they think of the stand of oh well you know before they got married they had the whole marriage ceremony and that's essentially what really what people think but no <laughs> When it says before they came together, that's usually, matter of fact, let's go back to Genesis again. Um, hmm. Let's go back to another forefather, Joseph. I'm sorry, not Joseph, uh, Jacob. Try to remember where that's at. Uh, no, that's a little bit before. Okay, yep, here it is. Let's get into the understanding of what is that before they came together, right? Now, mind you, again, sex is marriage, and they was already together because, again, sex is marriage, right? But let's get an understanding of what that before they came together is because, again, that trips people up and that makes people think that, oh, well, that's before the marriage ceremony and all that type of stuff, so they wasn't really together and that's how the Lord uh, was just in her stomach. So she pretty much was a virgin. She wasn't touched by Joseph. No, she was touched by Joseph. Joseph with her was bumping and grinding. So this is Genesis chapter 29 and verse 21. Now, this is when our forefather Jacob was dwelling with Laban, right? Who is a relative of his, of through his mother, Rachel, right? Living in Syria, if I'm not mistaken. And he served uh, Laban, if I'm not mistaken, 21 years, but we're going through uh, the first seven years because pretty much Jacob and Laban, when you read the story before the 21st verse, uh, pretty much made an agreement saying, hey, uh, pretty much really, Jacob saw Rachel, right? Because Jacob was looking for Laban and then he, he ran into some, uh, I believe, shepherds, if I'm not mistaken. And basically he asked him, hey, do you know where Laban is at and all that? <laughs> And basically, yeah, his daughter's coming. And when Jacob saw Rachel, he saw how beautiful she was. And he was like, damn, she looking good. So basically, when eventually Jacob uh, meets up with Laban, they make an agreement saying that, look, <clears throat> excuse me, apologies. That pretty much, look, you know, I like your daughter. I like her and I want her. So I work seven years for her and things like that, right? <clears throat> So after, this is after the seven years that, uh, um, what you call it, Jacob works his seven years to get uh, Rachel to be his wife. Actually, right, verse 20 says, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. Right? But 
as you can see here, the subtitle, Laban's treachery, Laban had other ideas. So this is verse 21. <clears throat> and Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. So that's how he's going to become his wife, <laughs> that he may go in unto her. What do you think the going unto her means? The bumping and grinding, right? Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind, baby. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. That is before they came together, because usually you would have a feast, a little celebration. That's what would happen, right? Uh, which, Lord's willing, I could do a pretty much, uh, I'm not going to go into it now, but Lord's willing, go into a manners and custom video, Lord's willing, into pretty much how marriage was back in, uh, in, in biblical times. But this is what the before they came together is. <clears throat> Right. They didn't do it the, the, the normal way, usually, which would be, you know, the friends and family gather together and then they would go into the bedroom and that's how they would become husband and wife. No, Ma Joseph and Mary already started bumping and grinding. They already started getting in uh, into it. Right. So verse 22 and Laban gathered together all the men of the pla place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter. He didn't take Rachel. That was, that was Laban's treachery, right? He wanted to get more uh, time out of Jacob. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her, right? Jacob went in unto her, Leah, not knowing that it was Leah. I'm sorry, not knowing that it was Leah and not Rachel. He was thinking that it was Rachel. Now, the reason why I think that uh, Laban was able to get over on him for that is because, you know, obviously the drinking and all that type of stuff, you know, Jacob was probably out of it, not really seeing correctly, thinking correctly. So when it was time, he probably just said, hey, we going? And they just went into the tent and uh, did the bump and grind, not knowing, right? And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. So when he woke up, he was like, well, hold up, you ain't Rachel. Who the hell is you? <laughs> right? And he said to Laban, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's pretty much going to another account, showing you that what? Sex is marriage. Because pretty much Jacob was mad because like the agreement was for Rachel. But now... Because you tricked me and deceived me, now I have to take responsibility for a woman that I really didn't want to be my wife, but I have to take that responsibility of her now being my wife. And on top of that, you tricked me and deceived me, so now I got to work another seven years for Rachel now. Right? <clears throat> so that is going to uh, the backstory to the before they came together. Right? And that's what trips people up is... When people read that, which really what trips people up is the mindset, again, thinking in modern times, how things work today, they think that that's how it goes back to, uh, in, in the ancient world. Now, usually when you talk to people, people usually say, oh, yeah, I know it wasn't the same way. But then if you know it's not the same way, then your thinking should change. So really, it shows that people really do and really shows that people are very unstudied and unlearned about biblical customism and biblical how things were done in biblical times. <laughs> Because they'll you'll sit there and talk to them. You know, some people say, because they don't really want to hear it, they just want to go on with their day and they just want to really just believe whatever they want to believe. They'll say, yeah, I know that. And yeah, I know things was different back then. But then it's like, okay, when it's being explained to you, why can't you un then understand that, look, in biblical times, pretty much sex was marriage and that the coming together was pretty much, let's just say the ceremony stage or whatever, right? The everybody coming together to pretty much make a, a celebration of, hey, you know, this is going to be my son-in-law. He's going to marry my daughter. And, you know, this is our families being joined together. And it's everybody, you know, meet my new son-in-law, Jacob, and things like that, right? And they have the feast and the drinks. Everybody's having a good time. And then later on, you know, the the uh, they would enter the marriage chamber and then get the bumping and grinding on. Very simple. As the scriptures say, the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai, very simple. But again, people think according to this standard, according to how they live in modern times today. <clears throat> right? Um, so again, let's read verse 18 again now with understanding. Now the birth of Yahushua was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse, meaning married, right? Past tense, already married, and again, sex is marriage, to, uh, to Joseph before they came together. 
right? Before the whole ceremony and the party and everything like that. They didn't do things the, let's say, the traditional way, right? They just started already getting into it. Whether that be whatever the situation may have been that had them go down that road or maybe they just was in so such in love with each other that they just said, you know, screw it, we're just going to start getting into it right now. But whatever have you, this is how things went between Joseph and Mary, not the typical traditional way, right? And it says what? She was found with child of the Holy Spirit, right? So now let's get into that point, right? Because again, people think or believe in this immaculate conception that the Lord put a, a child in Mary and oh, well, she was a virgin, so she never got touched by Joseph. Again, like what Russell Wilson was saying that, you know, pretty much Joseph was taking care of a child that wasn't his. But then how could he be called son of Joseph or son of David, right? For him to be called, because when people saw him, they would say, thou son of, uh, son of David. To be called the son of David means that you have to come from the lineage of David. And again, going back to the genealogy, which let me get the definition of the word genealogy, but going from the first, right, which, uh, where is it? All right, let's read verse 6. And Jesse begot David the king, King David, and David the king begot Solomon, King Solomon, that had been the wife of Urias. Right? So here within the lineage, you see that David is mentioned, right? David the king, going back to the book of Samuel, right, during that time. So for him to be called the son of David, he has to be of the lineage of the line of David. Right, a line, a descendant, traced continually see, from an ancestor, right? Pedigree, ancestry, descendant, lineage, line, line of descent, family tree, right? Uh, family, dynasty, pretty much, yeah, bloodline, there you go. So the Messiah was of the bloodline going back to David and going further than that, going all the way back to Abraham, he cannot be called the son of David if he's not of the lineage, if he didn't come from, from that, right? Which, matter of fact, I was going to go into that, but let's actually go into, uh, to prove this now. Let's go into Luke, the second chapter, right? I'm just going to follow the spirit. So this is uh, Luke chapter two and it says, Yahushua's birth in Bethlehem, right? Uh, I'm going to read the first verse. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was, was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, excuse me, into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. So Joseph was of the lineage of David. And that's what I want to get. That's why the Lord was called the son of David. Because your father is of the lineage of David. Therefore, you also are of the lineage of David. So it wasn't something that was a mystery. People knew that his line went back to David. He was of a royal line going back to David. Because they had the records back then. They needed to know who you were. So it was known who your father was. Because if he was born just of Joseph not being his father, an immaculate conception, who are you going back to? Who are you tied to? Right? Because you have to understand, back then there was inheritance rights and things like that. If you didn't, if Joseph wasn't his biological father, how could he inherit anything of Joseph? Let's say Joseph was a rich man, but hey, again, the immaculate conception, he was just a baby thrown in there. You don't have no ties to this man because you're not of this lineage. You're not of this family tree. You're not of this stock, this bloodline. So you have no inherited rights to anything. So therefore we can't leave anything to you. You see how that works? That's how things worked back then. Because fathers would have a, you know, uh, let's just say a, a wealthy inheritance and they would leave that to their son. But if your son is not tied to you, therefore being he's not really your son, therefore how could you really leave anything to him? You're leaving pretty much uh, leaving substance to nothing. 
showing you that what he was again joseph was which was his father his biological father joseph was of the lineage of david therefore his son that came out of him yahweh shai the messiah was also of the lineage and stock of david <laughs> right verse 5 to be taxed with mary his espoused his married wife being great with child now we're going to jump to where is it okay here we go verse 21 and when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahawashai, not Jesus. Yahawashai, which was so named of the angel before that he was conceived in the womb. <laughs> right? Right? Going back to what? The law. The, the law of circumcision, right? That was given unto Abraham. Verse 22. And when the days of her, who's, her, who's the her? Mary. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So this goes back to what? To the law of purification, which, if I'm not mistaken, is in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Leviticus 12. Right. So again, Mary went through the law of purification. Let's get into the law of purification. Right. It says the laws of motherhood. And the Lord, which Lord all caps there, is the Heavenly Father's name, which is Yahweh. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived, conceived seed. What is seed? Right? If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child. Let's get into that. Right? Conceived seed. What is the word for seed? Zerai. To, and one of the definitions says to become pregnant, to be made pregnant. How does a woman become pregnant when a man pretty much, apologies if you have children around, but we're all adults here. When a man ejaculates into a woman, when he releases his sperm into a woman, that is how a woman becomes pregnant. So, again, if Mary was truly a virgin, according to the standard of this world, why would she have to go through the law of purification? <laughs> If no man, if Joseph didn't ejaculate into her, if he didn't release his uh, his sperm into her, she would not need to go through the law of purification. She would have just had the Lord. He would have just popped out, and then that's it. There would no, there would be no need to go through a purification. She never received sperm into her body, but we see that she had to go through it, meaning that she did receive sperm. Whose sperm did she receive? Joseph's. Right. So again, verse two, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then shall she be unclean seven days. According to the according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day of the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Right. So you see, that's what they went through in uh, Luke, the second chapter, showing that what Mary received sperm into a body. That's why she had to go through the law of purification, right? NLT, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, she will be ceremonial, ceremonially, sorry, ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her menstrual period, right? This is what Mary fulfilled, and this is what Mary and the son fulfilled. Right, NLT for Luke 2 and 22, then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of the child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. See, more proof that what? <clears throat> Joseph, again, sorry if you have kids, but, you know, if you have kids around, you know, cover their ears or whatever. But showing you that one, uh, showing you again that what? Joseph ejaculated into Mary. She received or I'm sorry, she conceived seed. Another word, let's get into that word. Which conceived, again, ED, past tense. To become pregnant with child. There you go. How does a woman, again, become pregnant with child? By receiving sperm into her body through the act of sex.
Very simple. So Joseph is not a stepfather. No, Joseph is the biological father. Him being called, uh, him being of the lineage of David, and then his son, the Messiah, Yahawashai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ, being called son of David, meaning that what? Your father is also a son of David. Therefore, you are the son of David. You are of the house and lineage or the stock of David. You, your, your line goes back to David. That's why we call you thou son of David. Now let's get into another person, right? Let's go to Luke, the first chapter of another person who was born of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go ahead. This is Luke chapter 1 and verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel of the Lord said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Now we know that what John had a normal birth as well. So does this mean that what? Being filled of the Holy Spirit or being born of the Holy Spirit means that what? Did John's mother, Elizabeth, also? Did uh, Zacharias not also go into his wife? No, he, John also had a normal birth. Right. John was also when it says born of the Holy Spirit, meaning that what like the Lord always said, right, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I am, you know, brace. I am not sent but unto lost sheep of house of Israel. Right. All these things that he said basically to show you that what his will was to do the will of his father. That's what it means when it says born of the Holy Spirit, meaning basically he you are born to do the will of the Heavenly Father on earth. Simple as that. That's what it means to be born of the Holy Spirit. But you are born just like every other man. No different than any other man. And now that I said that, let's segue into. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon. This is Wisdom of Psalm in the seventh chapter, starting at verse one. It says, I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. In my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, right, being formed in the womb, being compacted in blood, of the seed of man. What is the seed of man? That, again, going back to the Hebrew word, zarai, right, that is the seed right man's sperm could be likened unto a seed and the woman womb could be like or the woman could be likened unto the earth that produces the seed after nine to ten months usually it's uh ten, i'm sorry usually it's nine but excuse me maybe sometimes complications happen that extend it to maybe being ten months right but the seed which is the sperm of a man <coughs> went out through the act of sex sex goes into the woman and she can uh, receives that seed and then later she conceives the, the child later. Just like, again, going into when a farmer plants seed into the ground. And then months later, what? That uh, seed bears fruit. Very simple. Right? Being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep, which is sex. When I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was was crying as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. For there is no king and is not the Messiah the king? For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men, right, John as well, right? For all men have one entrance into life and the like going out. So how do men come into this world? Through the act of sex through your father putting you pretty much in your mother's womb, and then nine months you come out later, 
no king has any uh, any beginning of birth and is not again the Messiah known as the king for it not is he not is it not written he is king of kings and lord of lords for all men is not John one of these all men have one entrance into life and the like uh, and the like going out so everybody is born the same the, the Holy Spirit just means you are anointed to do the will of the Heavenly Father that's it <laughs> Uh, another example, um, what you call it, uh, I'm not going to go to it, but um, what's his name? Jeremiah. A matter of fact, I have to go into it now because pretty much Jeremiah was also born of the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter one and verse four. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, came unto me, excuse me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So Jeremiah was pretty much separated to do like, look, you're my prophet. Before you even got up all in your mother's womb and all that, and your spirit was put in there, you was already in the spirit realm, and I already, uh, you already had a lot to look. You were going to be my prophet, and you're going to be my prophet on earth, right? You're going to be born of the Holy Spirit, even though it doesn't say that here, but with understanding, you know that Jeremiah was born of the Holy Spirit. What well, he was sanctified, right? Now, doesn't holy mean sanctified, separate? So look, you're not going to be like everybody else. You're going to be separate. You're, how are you going to be separate? You're going to do my will. Other people may be regular, and they have their regular lives, and they do this, but no, you're not going to have a regular life. You're going to have a, a special life. And your life is going to be dedicated to me. And that's how your life is going to be different from everybody else. Same as the Lord and same as John. And the same as what we're reading with Jeremiah right now. Right? Again, I sanctify. I'm sorry. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And or I, I, the Heavenly Father, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. <laughs> Right? The word there for sanctified is quadash, which means holy. Right? To consecrate, sanctify, prepare, dedicate, be hallowed, be holy. Right? To be set apart. Right? So, using these three examples, these three men being born of the Holy Spirit were set apart from everybody else. They had a separate mission. Their mission was to do the will of the Heavenly Father on earth. <laughs> Yahweh Shai said that. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. John did the will of the Heavenly Father. Jeremiah did the will of the Heavenly Father. That's what it means to be born of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's all. So now we've tackled that whole, you know, uh, matter of fact, there's one more. Because uh, I want to be very thorough with this because... You know, a lot of just, this is just like a, eh. like when I heard him say that, I'm like, dude, like really? Like, again, if you want to be stepfather, be a stepfather, be a father, a child that isn't yours. Fine. Go ahead and do that. But don't bring that into the scriptures. Don't try to sit there and say that. Oh, well, Joseph was a stepdaddy as well. No, he was, he, Joseph actually took care of his own kids. Again, if you want to be a stepfather, be a stepfather. Now, um, I'm going to have to try and find this. Uh, is this not? Uh, I forgot how it goes. but um, uh, How's it go? Um, I believe that's in John. There we go. John 6 and 42. Perfect. This was this was said amongst the people. So the people knew who he was. This is John 6 and 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Yahawashai? The son of Joseph? Oh, oh, how? If he was born of an immaculate conception, why would they call him the son of Joseph? Is this not Yahawashai, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How then is it, how then, 
I'm sorry, how is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? He pretty much said a parable, a hard saying, and that's what they were confused on. Basically saying again that I am the bread which came down from heaven. So when he said that, it's like, hold up. He's saying he's the bread of heaven. What the hell? Like, hold up. Ain't your father and mother Joseph and Mary? We know you from growing up from a child. Your father used to carry you around and all that. It's like, you over here telling us now that you the bread from heaven? What you talking about? You Joseph's son. Again, Joseph was the biological father. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, I have not seen the movie, but if I'm not mistaken, uh, dealing with the Book of Clarence, that movie that came out, they go into pretty much the Immaculate Conception. I think the main character, I think his name is Clarence, basically they get into it and they make a joke of that saying, you believe that stuff? Basically showing that they know the truth. Here it is, you foolish people believe that the Lord was born of an immaculate conception. But in the movie, they make a joke of that saying, <laughs> you think that really, you know, a baby was just put in a woman's stomach? Really? Now, don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, let's get into the other parts as well. Uh, well, the other part, which is um, virgin, right? Now, this is a prophecy that would pretty much talks about the Lord, right? This is Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, right? Now, again, dealing with the word virgin, people think, which let's even get into it, right? So you can see. Right. This is this is the modern definition for virgin. Right. The first two it says a person who has never had sexual intercourse, even has one. Right. She is still a virgin. Right. It has one. A uh, second one. A person who is naive, innocent, or inexperienced in a particular context, pretty much a virgin. Right. But we have to get the understanding of what virgin meant during these times. Right. The biblical uh, definition. <coughs> which the word virgin has two uh, Hebrew words, which those both of those Hebrew words have different meanings. Now, one of the words is ilama, <clears throat> right? Now, again, when people see virgin, they'll think, oh, well, a virgin is a woman that never had sex. No, basically, a woman of marriageable age, right? Which really, when you go into the root word of ilama, pretty much a young woman, right? Right, a damsel made a virgin. So when you go into, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the word virgin, the word virgin, uh, one of the definitions means ilama, which is what? A young woman. It doesn't mean a woman that never had sex. It just means a young woman. And you could be a young woman that had sex. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Amongst our people, especially living in these times, a lot of young women have had sex. I remember growing up, a lot of young women being 12 and 13 and 14 years old ha were pregnant with a, with a child. So let's not act like young women can't have sex or get into sex. So that's what pretty much one of the definitions of virgin means. Ilama, which means a young woman of marriageable age, meaning that she's ready to be given off when she's past the flower of age for marriage. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that she never had sex with nobody. It just means virgin, meaning a young woman. And a young woman can have sex. Let's just be honest. I gave the example. I've seen 13, 14 years, a uh, year old woman growing up that were, you would say, a young woman and they had sex and they were pregnant with child. So they would fit that description of Ilama, a young woman. Now, the other word, uh, uh, let me just do this instead. Maybe that way I could find it. Is, if I'm not mistaken, Bathwala. Let me go, let me see. Here we go, perfect. This is the other word, bathwala, 
which means virgin. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Bothwala is really the definition that means pretty much an untouched woman. But I'm kind of trying to find it. <laughs> Hold up. They're not giving me much here. I remember it used to say an untouched woman. I don't know why. Maybe I'm not going into the right one. Uh, it's not given, but this de this other definition. So you can see there are two words uh, for virgin. The first one we went to, which was Ilama, which is what a young woman of marriageable age doesn't mean that she hasn't had sex. Just means that she's a young woman. Right. You'll also see damsel, as you'll see here sometimes as well. Right. A damsel, meaning what a young woman. <laughs> Right. And the other Hebrew word for virgin is Bathwala, which this one, I'm very sure. And I know means a young, I'm sorry, not a young woman, but a woman that has not been touched. It's actually, let's get into, uh, let me look up damsel as well. Right. Another word, na na which is a uh, of young woman, marital age, young woman, concubine or prostitute. Right. That's what um, I'm sorry. Damsel also means. But someone might think of damsel in this time period of meaning something else. Which, so actually look that up. What damsel means, at least in this time period. Oh, there you go. See. <clears throat> Damsel, a young unmarried woman. <laughs> Alas, a maiden, right? So yeah, Russell Wilson would be incorrect on that. Joseph was not a stepfather, right? Um... I have a couple more precepts here and then I'm going to close it out, right? This is Romans chapter 1, verse 3. It says, concerning his son, Yahweh our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. How is he made of the seed of David according to the flesh? When you go into the uh, Greek there for seed, again, remember seed is what? The sperm. And he even says it's sperma, right? It sounds like what it, 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 it's, uh, it sounds like what it is, sperm. <clears throat> Excuse me which is the semen vera. <laughs> I don't have to go into what semen is. It's your, your ejaculation. When you ejaculate into a woman, that's what the seed is. So he was made of the seed or the sperm of David, going back to David, going prior to David, all the way back to Abraham. That's how this lineage kept going. And then it, what, it was to Joseph. And then what? When him and Mary got together, Right? They didn't get together the traditional way, doing the whole ceremony and things like that. They just started bumping and grinding already. Again, however, whatever reasons, they just got together and started having sex. Still, they had sex. And then what? She was found of child of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that Joseph was a, uh, was a stepfather. He was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So he is of that lineage. That's why he's called. That's why some people, when they saw him, they would say, thou son of David. Right? Again, going to John 6 and 42, is this not Yahusha, whose father and mother we know? In order for him to be, for people to say it, means that what? They had to have the records of him. Oh, yeah, we know your father is Joseph, and we know your father Joseph goes back all the way to David. That's why we have the genealogy, which shows you that they had what? The record of his genealogy. Showing that what? We know that you go back to David. Showing that what? They kept records back then. So even within the first, from verse 1 to 17, that should be proof enough that, hold on, if we have a, a recollection of pretty much his genealogy here, it must mean that what? They had a record of his genealogy to for him, for him to go back to, right? And even if I'm not mistaken, in Luke, 
the uh, third chapter has his genealogy even go back further to Adam. It starts with him, if I'm not mistaken, in Luke, the third chapter, and it goes all the way back to Adam, showing you that what they had the records back then so they can prove who your father was. Again, going back to the example I gave earlier, if you have a son, you want to leave an inheritance. Well, you have to leave an inheritance to your father. Uh, uh, you want to leave an inheritance for your son. Well, who's your father and things like that? These were things that were... Uh, that they uh, had back then as a record to know who you are, who's your father, what line, what stock you come from. Just in case if anything happens, we have a record of, okay, well, you know, here's, here's a record of this and that. So if any problem comes up or persists, we have a record to say, oh, no, no, hey, he's, he's his son, or hey, here's this, here's the record of this and that. Same thing like you have today. It's no different. <laughs> uh, I had one more thing. I'm not trying to stretch this, but I had one more thing. Just want to be very, very thorough with this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what was the last precept I had? I think it's going back to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you get this also in the NLT. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let me read this. Uh, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Why did Joseph want to put Mary away privately? Because again, going back to they didn't do things the normal way. And when people see Mary with a baby bump, people are going to be like, hold up. You were promised to Joseph, but we didn't see you do the marriage ceremony, the typical thing The you know, everybody comes together. So it's like, hold up, Mary, what's going on here? You have a baby bump, but we didn't, you didn't do things the traditional way. So who's the father? Are you stepping out on Joseph? Because you was promised to Joseph and things like that. It was a secret thing between Mary and Joseph where people didn't know that Mary and Joseph were um, already having sex. So if people saw, again, Mary with the baby bump, people going to like, hold up. You was promised to Joseph, but we didn't see you have, you know, because that would be a thing that everybody would know. Because just in case, let's say after uh, Mary has a baby and things like that, and let's say a man comes into a city and sees Mary and be like, ooh. Oh, she looking good, right? And things like that. And so let's say someone steps to her and things like that. Oh, I want to talk to her. Because you know how Jake is. Like, he's even used today. It's like, who's that chick over there? Oh, who's that? Oh, that's, uh, I'm just going to use Rebecca as a name. Oh, that's Rebecca. Oh, she's single? She not? Uh, nah, I don't think she's she not single or whatever. You could talk to her. But hey, back then, people would know who the, uh, who, uh, who's your husband was and who your wife was. So just in case, you know, let's say someone wants to step to marry, like, no, 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 bro, bro, chill out. She's, she's taken for uh, Joseph's her husband and things like that. That was a precaution. So just in case, you know, things like that, someone wants to step to. And even going back to the way women would dress, you know, women would dress a certain way if they were married, right? Now, women covered up, obviously, back then, but there would be a way, which Lord's Rock again, so I think it's in the Manners and Customs Bible, but women would dress a certain way. I think they would reveal and when I say reveal, I don't mean like <laughs> what women do today, but they would reveal more of their hair, if I'm not mistaken, just to show there would be little implications they would show to show that, um, uh, hey, I'm either married or I'm taken or I'm not taken, right? <laughs> but today, the way women dress, it looks like anybody could take you or you've been taken multiple times. <laughs> Right. And IV says, because Joseph, her husband, again, how would Joseph, how would Mary become, how would Joseph become a husband through the act of sex was faithful to the law, to the law. Right. And yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. What law was he uh, uh, faithful to? Right. That once he took her, he had to uh, pretty much um, have the responsibility of her. And if I'm not mistaken, that goes back to. Um, no, it's in the law of Deuteronomy. Um, matter of fact, let me see if this will work. Let's see if they have it here. Deuteronomy 22. Let's see. All right, it says he was faithful to the law. So he didn't want to break the law. All right, here we go. Perfect. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 13. So what law was Joseph faithful to? 
right? Because we see what? Joseph wanted to stay faithful to law and Mary also in Luke, the second chapter, fulfilled the law, right? So they both fulfilled the law, right? The law of purification. So let's get into what law Joseph wanted to stay uh, um, faithful to. This is Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 13. If a man take a wife, which Joseph did, right? Now, again, we're not given the backstory on, you know, pretty much why they didn't do things the traditional way and things like that, whatever have you. Right. But he took unto him a wife by going in unto her. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman when I came to her and found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the token of the damsel virginity unto the elders, uh, unto the elders of the city and the gate. Right. And the damsel fa damsel's father shall say unto elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife and he hateth her. And lo, he had given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Now, the cloth would have what the pure, uh, the, the blood on it. When you pop a woman for the first time, right, you pop a hymen and what blood would come out. Right. So pretty much that would be pretty much uh, uh, the cloth with the blood on it to prove that, hey, when he went in onto her, she was pr uh, proven a, uh, a virgin. Also, they would have the shekels as well, as well to prove that, hey, he paid for the daughter. All right. But again, this wasn't they didn't do things the normal way. However, the situation was between Joseph and Mary. They didn't do things this normal way. But what Joseph still wanted to stay faithful to the law, like it said in the NLT. Because what he took himself the responsibility of having the wife, he he went in onto her, and things like that. So Joseph tried to scurry out, and because he tried to do things a sneaky way, and said like maybe I could just divorce her on the lower thing or something like that. So that way, uh, uh, because he didn't want to get the public disgrace, which was pretty much to be stoned. Because again, if people see Mary with the baby bump, and people are like, hold up, we didn't see y'all do the normal things, which is the ceremony, the people getting together for the feast, and all that. It's gonna be like, hold up. Mary would be considered an adulteress, stepping out on Joseph, and she would be put to death. And Joseph didn't want that. Right? So this pretty much goes into the uh, uh, that law. right? I'll read it a little bit more. It says, And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Right? And they shall immerse him in hundred shekels, hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father Daniel, because he had brought up an evil name upon the virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. And this is what Joseph wants to stay loyal to. Right. Again, going back to what I said, not not make and I'm sorry, and not willing to make her a public example. Right. He didn't want Mary to die because in his heart, he knew like, yo, we just didn't do things the, the normal way, whatever their situation was. And it's like, yo, I don't want Mary to die. But it's like, fuck, this situation is whatever the situation was, was like shit. Right. Let me pull up that uh, NIV translation again. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce, divorce her quietly. Right? Verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, right, of the lineage of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her, in her is of the Holy Spirit. See? So the angel was basically like, look, don't fear anything. Pretty much the Heavenly Father got you covered. We know that you guys didn't do things the normal way. Look, still take your wife. Don't try to do anything foolish or stupid or anything like that. Take her and, and, and go. Right. Same thing it says. So that's pretty much the virgin birth or the immaculate conception, right? That pretty much the Lord was born of a normal birth. When it says he was born of the Holy Spirit, just basically means he was anointed to do the will of the Heavenly Father. He was consecrated, separated, right? John was also born of the Holy Spirit and he had a normal birth. Jeremiah was born also and also the other prophets as well was born of the Holy Spirit. Lord's willing, if we are those men, we were also born of the Holy Spirit, but we had normal births. Right. It just means that we were uh, these men and Lord's when we are those men were just anointed to do the will of the Heavenly Father. We were separate. We were sanctified, made separate, holy 
to do the will of the Heavenly Father. We have a special mission to do. That's all it means. Like Yahweh Shai said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Jeremiah's meat was to do the will of him that sent him to be a prophet unto the nations. Lord's willing, again, we are those men and we continue to the end. We were, our meat is also to do the will of him that sent us to do, our, to do this work. That's all it means. Simple as that. The Lord's father, uh, well, his biological father, Joseph, is his father. There is no immaculate conception where the Heavenly Father put a child in there and things like that. Could that have been done? Yes, but obviously that was not what was done. And Lord's willing, I went through this video thoroughly enough that you can understand. And Lord's willing, really, the Heavenly Father opens up your mind for you to understand that, look, the Lord had a normal birth just like everybody else. He was just separated, anointed to do the will of his father. That's simple enough. And basically going through the other definitions of the word virgin, giving you the two definitions. One means a young woman of marriageable age. Doesn't mean that she never had sex. She's just a young woman, and she could have had sex at a young age. As we've seen in this time period, we've seen young women have, uh, have sex and things like that. Right. And also the other Hebrew word, batwala, which just means a woman that actually means a woman who has never had sex, never been touched. Simple as that. R uh, Romans one and three, he was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. He's of the same. In order for him to be of the seed of David, he had to come out from a man that was of the lineage of David, which Joseph, Joseph, his father, was of the lineage of David, making him of that same line. Simple as that. So, Lord's willing, this video is edifying. Again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash, Shalom.